Hello everyone. In the last video, we discussed how greedy algorithms can optimally solve problems that can be formulated in terms of matroids. Over the next few videos, we will dive into graph theory and the various types of problems that can be solved using graph-based algorithms. In this video, we will focus on algorithms for generating minimum spanning trees, or MSTs. If you enjoy this lecture, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. With that, let's begin. A graph is a collection of vertices and edges, often denoted as a tuple v, e, where v represents the set of all vertices and e the set of all edges. For our purposes, we will be working with simple graphs, meaning that there is at most one edge between any two vertices, and the endpoints of any edge must be different, meaning that self-loops are not allowed. Concretely, you can think of each vertex as corresponding to nodes, where edges represent lines connecting these nodes. Notice that graphs themselves do not have any spatial information, meaning that we can arrange the vertices and edges however we like so long as they obey the constraints specified by g equals v, e. For example, these two layouts correspond to the same graph. Let's discuss some key terminology involving graphs. We define the order of a graph to be the number of vertices denoted as n, or the absolute value of v, and the size of a graph to be the number of edges, which is denoted either as m or the absolute value of e. A subgraph g prime of a graph refers to a graph g prime equals v prime comma e prime, where v prime is a subset of the original set of vertices v, and e prime is a subset of the edges between the vertices and v prime in the original graph. Showing this graphically, here's an example of a subgraph of the following graph. A path along a graph refers to a sequence of edges, which is traversed from one vertex to another. Each edge can also be traversed once along a given path, meaning that we cannot repeat edges. The length of a path is simply given by the number of edges traversed. A path which starts and ends at the same vertex is known as a cycle. A graph is connected if there is a path from any vertex to any other vertex in the graph. A connected subgraph without cycles is known as a tree. This also means that there is exactly one path from any vertex to any other in a tree. The number of edges in a tree is always given by the number of vertices minus 1. A graph which consists entirely of disjoint unions of trees is known as a forest. We can modify the definition of a graph by adding a weighting function w, which maps edges to weight values. The total weight of a graph is given by adding the weights of all the edges together. Now that we have established the requisite vocabulary, let's discuss MSTs. A spanning tree refers to a tree which connects all the vertices of a given graph using a subset of its edges, in other words, a subgraph. A minimum spanning tree is a spanning tree which minimizes the total weight of all the edges used. Finding MSTs is particularly useful for network design, where establishing connections between some nodes may be more costly compared to others. Hence, we would want to find the connection which minimizes the total weight which in this case is the cost. Since a MST is a subgraph of the original graph, the graph itself must be connected for a MST to exist. Hence, we will assume that the graph is connected from this point forward, meaning that the number of edges must be at least the number of vertices minus one. Before we get into how to algorithmically construct a MST for a given graph, let us first define a multi-cut. A multi-cut is a partition of a graph's vertices into several non-intersecting blocks. If there is an edge between vertices and different blocks, this edge is said to cross the cut. In order to compute the MST for a graph, there are two main algorithms we can use. The first is Kruskal's algorithm, which is stated as follows. First, we create a copy G prime of the graph without all the edges. We then define a multi-cut in which each vertex is placed in its own block. We then create a list of all the edges from the original graph and sort them in order of increasing weight. We then iterate over each edge in the sorted list. If the edge connects vertices in two different blocks, add the edge to G prime and combine the blocks. Otherwise, simply skip the edge and progress to the next edge. Repeat this until either the entire list has been traversed or all the vertices are in a single block. Here is a visual demonstration of this algorithm in action.
Proving this algorithm is actually extremely simple, as we can simply reformulate this problem as a weighted matroid m equals ufw, where u is the set of all edges, f is the set of all forests in G, and w is simply the weighting function for each edge. Since Kruskal's algorithm is identical to the matroid basis weight maximization algorithm provided in the last video, we therefore have that this algorithm must be correct trivially. Before we can compute the runtime for this algorithm, we first need to clarify some aspects of the algorithm, namely, how are we going to store and coalesce the blocks slash forests of vertices? Well, to do this, we simply use a special type of data structure known as a disjoint set data structure, or a union fine data structure. As the name implies, a disjoint set data structure stores a collection of non-overlapping sets. This structure supports two operations, find, which determines which set contains the element we want to find, and union, which merges two subsets together. While there are several underlying structures we could use to construct the sets themselves, most of these are only optimal for one of the operations at a trade-off for the performance of the other. The structure which provides a balanced runtime for both operations in the structure we will use in this case is a tree. By organizing each subset as a tree, we can identify each tree with its root. Hence, if we keep track of the parent of each node in the tree, we can find the root by recursively taking the parent of the current node. Therefore, if the tree is balanced, we can perform the find operation in O of log n time. The union operation can be performed as follows. Simply calculate the roots of the two trees using find, and then set the parent of the root of the tree with the smaller depth equal to the root of the tree with the larger depth. This process allows us not only to perform union in O of log n time, but it also ensures that the tree stays relatively balanced after doing so as well. With this in mind, we can now calculate the complexity of Kruskal's algorithm. Assume that the graph has n vertices and m edges. Using the matroid formulation of the problem established earlier, we have that the complexity is O of m log m plus m times f of m. Since checking membership in f simply involves using the find and union operations, we have that the complexity is simply O of m log m plus m log n. And since m is equal to O of n squared in the worst case, where we have a complete graph, we have that this simplifies to O of m log n. We can slightly improve on the performance of Kruskal's algorithm using Prim's algorithm. The basic premise is that rather than starting with n trees and combining them, we only keep track of one tree and progressively expand it with each iteration. In particular, we start by storing all the vertices of the graph in a priority queue, Q, with key infinity. We then choose an arbitrary root R to start building the tree at, updating key of Q, R to be zero. While the priority queue is non-empty, we then delete min of Q, taking the popped vertex U and updating the weight of all adjacent vertices still in Q, V, to be min of the current key of Q, V, and w of u comma v, where w is the weighting function. If we end up updating the key at this step, we set parent of v to be u. Here's an example of this algorithm in action. I will leave it as an exercise for the viewer to prove the correctness of this algorithm. Calculating the complexity, we have that n items are inserted into the priority queue, n items are deleted from the priority queue, and decrease key is called at most m times. If our priority queue implementation is based on a Fibonacci heap, the decrease key and insertions are O of 1, and the delete mins are O of log n, meaning that the total complexity is O of n plus n log n plus m, which is equal to O of m plus n log n. These are the two main algorithmic approaches for calculating the MST of a connected graph. In the next video, we will cover BFS and DFS, which are different methods of traversing through graphs efficiently. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.